Hi, Krista. Thank you so much for joining me. I'm so super excited to chat with you. Oh, thanks so much for having me. I'm excited to be here. Uh, well, for those of you who don't know who Krista is, she is a true rock star. She's a drummer. She's a mother. She's a publisher, writer, so many amazing things, a teacher. I cannot wait to hear your story. How are you? Thank today? you. I'm doing great today. Good. And I'm just going to share with the whole audience that this is take two. Want to know why it's take two? And this all goes back to resilience, right, Krista? Oh, is it does. Recorded this rock star podcast. It was so much fun, filled with information and stories. Record did not work. Or I <laughs> hit record. I'm going to blame it on technology. Yes. But I hit record and then I must have re-hit it again. So there you go. So you guys are on take two. Thank you for your patience. And this just means I get to hear more about your story, right? Yeah, that's right. Awesome. Love it. Love it. Love it. So Krista, talk to me. You are the epitome of what women should aspire to be. You are very successful in your community and lifting others, helping others, mm -hmm. highlighting everybody else. You're a connector, which I love yeah. about you. A connector in, let's just say, industries that would not be connected if not for you. So the yes. fact that you're sort of grassroots and you take community so to heart. I love that. That's where I built my businesses as well. So tell us a little bit about what you do. So what I do now is um, I publish a magazine and I host events to connect people. We storytell about business, innovation, community, and education all at once with um, mental health on top of everything. This gives people an opportunity to be inspired by remarkable people across Canada, now internationally, um, through storytelling, which is one of the best forms of inspiring people and engaging with people because you get to connect with them through their stories, as you well know, because you do the same. And it's, it's really that. important. And it does come from the music industry, which is where I started. Um, and I mean, I, I studied jazz, right, in college, and I write music, play drums and piano. And so when people look at me, they go, but now you publish a magazine. I go, yeah, music is the universal language of storytelling. That's where it all began. So all I'm doing is transferring that to paper and taking instead of you being, oh, that song was so great because it reminds me of A, B, or C. Now you get to read someone's story and go, this resonates with me because of A, B, and C. And then you get to take their knowledge and use it for your own. I so love it's that. quite inspiring. Like I really have the best job in the whole world. My whole I, days are filled with events and talking to people. Oh, how awesome is that? And I love the fact that you connect music and storytelling, mm -hmm. because when I think back to, regardless, if you're listening to music and you think of a song or you hear a song and you're like, oh, I remember when, you know, Bon Jovi released, you know, Slippery When Wet mm -hmm. or whatever you're listening to, or, or you, it brings you back to that time. Of, yeah you know, a good time, hopefully, sometimes sad times. I mean, I always for think sure. too of, uh, let's just say, for example, you and I chatted earlier uh, about Sinead O'Connor and yeah. uh, very sad. She was a beautiful person inside and out. I knew her story well before uh, her passing and uh, my father also passed. And when he passed, I read the eulogy and I included the whole nothing compares to you. And yeah. actually on his tombstone where you're supposed to write, you know, the date and the name and all that's there. But at the bottom, I put nothing compares to you. So she is for me, somebody that is so incredible and her passing was very sad and uh, she'll very. be sadly missed, but her legacy of storytelling will always continue right? And yeah. so the fact that you have connected those two, mm -hmm. I don't think a lot of people would connect the two. But as soon as you said, I'm a musician, yeah. I'm like, she's an awesome storyteller. And, and people forget, like in, in using Shania Park, her stuff will carry on forever. The story, sure the song will. you've heard and that you wrote on your dad's tombstone and that you carried forward, those stories stay with us because they inspired us. They got us to engage in something that it's no different than reading someone's story that's powerful you are going to be inspired and you're going to carry it with them it's no different than music 
You'll remember when you read it. You'll remember when you heard the song. All of it's the same. We just have to, we're just transposing it to paper. That's all yes. we're doing. And you're allowing people that platform in a safe, respectful, authentic yes. manner. And you are allowing them to tell their story in a safe space. And I feel that that is worth its weight in gold because, you know, you don't necessarily have to write a song, but, you know, art and um, storytelling is done in many different ways. You could do it on a canvas, you can do it behind drums, or you can do it on a platform such as uh, your magazine or a podcast. And I love yeah. that. And what I think is important too is when you listen to somebody's story, it doesn't mean you have to fully resonate or take oh. in what that person has lived, but I feel like you grow and you learn from everything and everybody's story. And it could be that kind of aha moment, or it could be, yeah. wow, she did that. Yeah. Or she got That's there. Right. That's in And it's the inspiration that happens, right? It, it's, you can read someone's story and, and it could be something that's totally separate from your life, but it sparks an interest because you're so intrigued by how somebody got there. How did you get from here to here? What did you do in the middle that got you there? That's what intrigues me all of the time is what made you you? And why yeah. are you that way? Because that's incredible. And to know that people, it's funny, I, like I've met people that like studied biology and now, you know, they're, they're storytelling in a different way or they're working in the corporate world using their knowledge from school. Knowledge is transferable across all industries and platforms. So we have to start making sure that we do that with each other. And I want to know what everyone has to say. I want to know where you've been, what you're doing, why you're doing it. You know, and I love that. We can connect everybody. And it's neat because then it gets you to look outside of your own tiny community. You know, we're so siloed that we stay where we're put. No, go learn from other people. It will help you grow within your own industry and as your own person, if you know about what's happening everywhere. Absolutely. And I love that because uh, yeah. you and I had also spoken about businesses and I feel that the evolution and what ha what is here now and what is really coming is that people aren't buying into businesses. You could have the best product ever, but yeah. people are buying into the people and the founders and the drivers mm. behind the business. Yes. Our missions align. Can I relate to that person? And you know what? That's the other neat thing too, is businesses open up to a whole different sort of community, if you will, that they might have not touched had they not spoken about mental health, had they not spoken about this really important topic. Mm -hmm. So I feel like what you're doing is connecting people that would have otherwise not been connected. So yes. I absolutely love the journey and the mission that you're on. It's great. Mm -hmm. yeah, it's And it's remarkable to watch. Like my, I tell people all the time, I really have the best job. Like I get to watch collisions happen across industry and generation every single day. So I get to watch someone that's still in university collide with a business investor, you know, in a couple of years, who knows where that's going to lead, but I get to watch it happen. I get to watch business owners start their business and I get to follow their whole journey and watch them succeed. This is important wow. stuff because we're supposed to be celebrating each other not holding each other back, not stopping other people from doing what they're purposely supposed to be doing, with their passions. We should be driving people to be better. And by well, telling these stories, yeah. we are driving them to be better. Well, driving them and, you, and you're taking it to a next level too is mm -hmm. not only do I find that you're also a teacher, but we lift others by celebrating their story mm -hmm. and their success. And it provides... It's not sure somebody's story might be entertaining and it can be something, you know, instead of Netflix, but my hopes and dreams for people watching, for example, my podcast or reading uh, the I Am Unbreakable magazine is that it's going to provide hope and inspiration, mentorship. When somebody mm -hmm. say watching you and watching this podcast and they're going to say, well, what's Krista's story? She did that and she's a mom and she's... A well, wow. Well, what, you know, they want to know, which brings me to my next question, Krista, and you know what this is, right? Which is, what is your secret? How do you do Krista and not get caught up in all the outside influences? Because you're a mother, 
you are a writer, a publisher, an amazing human being, a friend, a drummer, which we're also going to touch base on. So how do you, how do you do it? How do you self-care for you? See, that's, that's again, like we talked about before, that's a big learning thing for me. And, and I, I'm a big promoter of self-care of mental health. We hold a mental health event and I'm always about, you have to ask for help, you know, no matter what. And we always say, you can ask anybody in this community for help and we'll always be there. Well, I had to learn to do that, you know, and learn what self-care is and learn that I can put the phone down and the computer down and leave my kids and go do something for myself. So now it's really simple, but I, again, I had to learn and almost go ask the community what to do for myself. So little things like we talked about, like getting your nails done, huge on my line. I just started that this year. I'm like, this is the best thing in the whole world. And I like, love your Barbie nails. nails. Right? Let's see. Let's see like, your nails. I yes, saw. Oh, yeah. They're black and pink. So they're always my colors. They're either black and pink or pink and green. I love, love, love. And I'm right? always lilac. That's why you yeah. and I have the color thing going on, except I haven't done yeah. purple hair yet. Well, I used to do little <laughs> things behind. But, you know, I talk yeah. to women that are running massive corporations. I talk mm -hmm. to women that uh, are homeschooling and raising, you know, multiple children. I talk yeah. to women that are doing both. And the common thing is self-care and they are always last. And we feel like crap. We feel guilty. We feel like we should be doing something else. However, really, if we are doing all these jobs, shouldn't we care for ourselves? Absolutely. Well, and if, you, if you don't, you have nothing left to give. And, and that's when you hit the burnout, right? So you get so wrapped up in doing all of your other jobs. And like we talked about, you, you know, you're your mom. So you're also a chef and you're an Uber driver and you have like 20 jobs on the go, plus your own job, minimum, you know, plus your house. So yeah. how do you make time for yourself? And it's really important to do this. So things like I walk a lot. So walking with music, um, I play piano and going to that. Okay. You only have 15 minutes. I don't have a TV in my living room. Right now. My piano is in here so that when I have 15 minutes, I'm sitting down to play instead right? Or that. I'm going for the 15 minute walk, or I'm going to drive to the mountains to go and explore something new by myself, because I love we that. need to start doing things on our own as well. And that's for a sure. huge thing to stop here. Like but you, you, you are like permitting yourself, you're allowing that time for you. And I feel that a lot of women and myself included, I mean, I've just learned that. And, you know, g being in an industry, as you know, I have the private investigation security mm. Uh, business as well. For the first 10 years, I was so sick. I had so many different health concerns that I was going through and whatnot. And I never really realized, I mean, people talk about it and, you know, I'm, geez, I'm a advocate for mental health and I didn't realize I was doing it to myself and burnout is a thing. It doesn't mean like, oh, you're tired and you're weak and you can't handle it. It means I've given the gas for 10 years mm -hmm. and I don't have any gas left to give. And people who have never experienced it don't really cool. understand it. And no. that's fair enough. But yeah. it's neat that, you know, you and I, the type of personalities that we're doers and we're caretakers and, mm -hmm. you know, we fix everything else that really it's ourselves that we kind of look at last. Right. Yeah. But it's so great to start doing it. Right. And I mean, going to get your nails done is a once a month thing. This is not a hard thing. And if you don't like to do your nails, because I mean, I don't wear any other makeup except for my nails. So this is important. You know, it gives you 45 minutes to yourself. Yes. Where someone else is taking care of you. A hundred percent. It's remarkable. A hundred percent. And a walk. I, that's you know, but by yourself. And if you can't do something by yourself, then call a friend who can just walk with you until you get to that point of being able to walk by yourself, like taking that time, but you're a better person. If you do this, Absolutely. I mean, you don't do it, boy, are you overwhelmed? And then you just become grouchy and grumpy and you're like, Arr. and no. then you're, you're not good for anybody, but you're still getting everything done, but you're miserable <laughs> inside and you're letting everybody know, you know, you're a oh, grumpy yeah. bear. But with something I really struggled with, which you and I chatted about in our previous podcast, uh, is, you know, finding that time. I mean, I used to religiously go to the gym and, and do this and do that. And then I was starting to see like, geez, you know, 15 minute drive there, 15 minute drive back. Then it's an hour, mm -hmm. hour and a bit. Then you got to, it's like a kind of like a three hour event. I don't have that. So 
I would chunk because, you know, as we all know, mental health is massive for everybody. Brain wellness to me and just having a good mindset uh, is key to uh, life, <laughs> longevity, uh, good brain wellness, et cetera. But I found a really good kind of neat trick for me and I've shared with lots of women and women have shared it with me. So I want to share as well is if I can't go for that hour workout and commit to the drive and the getting ready and whatever afterwards, a lot of times what I'll do is I'll take a 15 or 20 minute walk or a half yeah. an hour walk and I'll be like, okay, I can't do the full hour, but I'll do the other half an hour later. Again, if I yeah. can't do that half an hour, I'll still get 15, 20 minutes in. So That's it's right. not about giving it up totally. Cause I think you and I were kind of like, we got to commit and we got to commit 150%. Yeah. That's a great quality to quality, excuse me, to have in some circumstances, but in other circumstances, you got to kind of forgive yourself and do it in chunks. Does that ever yes. work for you? And that's, that's, that's a really, really important point is you also have to be flexible with yourself. So, and that is the biggest thing. And honestly, that's the biggest thing music taught me is you have to be able to improvise all of the time, because even if you plan, okay, today I'm going to do an hour walk tomorrow. I'm going to slot 30 minutes to myself. I'm sorry, as a business owner and a parent, things change on an ongoing basis every single day. Sure. So you just have to know that you have some type of time for yourself. And I mean, if I don't get time, especially if you're like going into an event, like there is no time, you're overwhelmed, you're on the go, you have to go until this event is over. I make sure I have a bath every night. You know, even if it's at like 11 o'clock, I'm getting in, it's like, you can run the bath and do your work. If you want, you can read your news in the bath, take the bath. Like it's yeah. just downtime for a couple minutes or go have a hot I love shower that. so you have it to yourself. You just need to have the couple minutes to like re-energize. It doesn't have to be a huge thing. It doesn't have to be a full day, but also be okay when you have to shift. I love that because you know what? So many times women will set goals and sort of uh, things for themselves and the really neat thing about being an entrepreneur or setting goals for yourself is you're the one that set them. So yes. you get to change them. So if you had a goal for yourself that on this day, I'm going to do this many, you know, magazines, I'm going to do 25 events and that's what's going to happen. And if you're nearing it and you're seeing that you're not going to make those goals, it's okay to shift that goal and say, I'm yes. giving myself another six or 12 months. I feel as women, we almost need that validation or permission, if you will, from ourselves to say, you know what, I'm okay to shift mm -hmm. that goal. But we have to learn to give ourselves permission, which we, we've yes. never been taught, you know, and it's you're to be this way and do this. And especially when you become a parent, you have like, here's your responsibility and you're supposed to parent this way. Well, well no, you have to give yourself permission. Okay. You can parent the way you see fit. You can work the way you see fit. You can decide that today's whole schedule doesn't work for you. And that's okay. Like everything is adjustable and people have to learn to improvise. And that's think, the hardest thing for people to do. Sure is. But do you think being a parent has helped you with that? Because I know for me it did because it yeah. taught me to be more flexible as opposed to I got to do A, B, C, and D. And this is, you know, my schedule and my life. When you have kids, I mean, somebody gets sick, they, I don't know, knock out a tooth, they, whatever the case may be, they're, hoggy gets switched to another day you have to be flexible so yes. why do women find it so hard to be more flexible and forgiving with themselves that that's like what you said i think it we need yes, to because we weren't taught to you're taught and it's funny so when i got divorced a long time ago i went to i went back to school just to take courses like let's get our brain moving and this class was called communities and societies a female teacher from Africa and she gets up and she wants to talk about women and everything. And women don't give themselves credit for anything. It's you're, you're taught to do a, B and C like, here's your role, but now let's add on 20 other roles. So you don't think about yourself. You, especially as a parent, your kids come first, your bills come first, your house comes first, your job comes first, and then you can. So when you're learning to give yourself forgiveness, it's like, you're starting all over from scratch again. So well, that or people are retiring or, you know, yeah. sadly, 
I had mentioned the the gal that uh, I had done the previous interview with, where she was on her deathbed, literally very, very sick, where she realized four kids, C-suite job, huge corporate salary, but she was killing herself. She worried about not being there for her children. She worried if the legacy she was going to leave behind was going to be, yeah, mom was a hard worker. You know, she wasn't there for the kids. Right. And so she decided, you know what, I'm going to give up corporate and I'm going to start, you know, this business and she's doing fantastic. I mean, it's been three, four years of growth there. Of course, like, I mean, look at everybody has to make their bills and uh, has to make money and has to have a job to live. But whether Mm -hmm. you have children or you're looking, caring for yourself, the jump in and the the transition, if you will, still has to happen. But there is a better life for you. If you're stressing out and you're not happy, there is a better life on the other side. And and it's okay to stop and pause and think about what that life is supposed to be. And -hmm. that's what people forget to do, right? Because you're supposed to be this way in society's eyes. But no, it, it really comes down to you as an individual, you know, what kind of lifestyle do you want? How do you want to feel every day? What do you need to do to make that happen? And we don't consider that for ourselves. We consider it for our kids or our partners or our parents or our friends. We'll help you. We'll be there because that's who we are. But when you finally get to sit down and say, this is what I need as an individual, you you won't be so sick and tired anymore. And and I'm with you. Kids, Kids have taught me more than anything else in this world. Absolutely. I love, again, that we have such a similar mindset Mm -hmm. because so many of uh, my people and friends will say, I taught my kids everything. And for me, it's like my kids have taught me everything so much from unconditional love to patience. Man, (laughs) patience, patience, patience. How to breathe Uh, really good. Yes. And how to breathe through (laughs) things. Right. And funny, I've got a tattoo just as a reminder. I don't think you can see it. It says just breathe. And sometimes (laughs) my kids will be like, mom, look at your left arm, left arm. And I'm like, okay, we're good. (laughs) I'll be back in five minutes, screaming to a pillow. I'm like, yeah. I'm I just breathe through the whole thing. Yeah. Right. But mm-hmm. anyways, I love the fact that you say that, you know, everything in our life is, is a learning or a teaching moment, right? If we, if we're open to listening, sometimes I don't Thank you. Yeah. we are ready because, you know, there's some life lessons that I'm still learning. I learn every day from people like yourself, from people I meet strangers or people that I've known forever. And if you listen, and if you have the mindset and you're prepared and ready to hear. Yeah. I think you'll find what you're, what you're looking for. And I think that's key. So I want to know what was Krista's moment where you realized, okay, I'm transitioning. This is sort of my aha moment. This is what I want to be doing. What, what, what was that? And was there backlash from family and friends? What happened? Oh yeah. So it's funny because I started in the music industry, as you know, so I would just go and study drums, jazz. I performed and I was teaching. Um, Then I became a mom on my own. So then you have to, well, that's not going to pay the bills and you can't be out all night all of the time. So there was a shift. And then I went into corporate and it was always sales because that's the easiest job. Now, especially if you're a parent, because it's adjustable. But who wants to do that? In my head, that's all I could think. So I went through and did corporate sales. I worked for not for profit. Um, when someone gave me a magazine one day, they said, can you tell me what you think? And I said, no, because I really didn't like it. <laughs> and they said, no, that's why I brought it to you. So I told them and they said, can you do it? So I did their whole magazine, everything to do with it. Okay. Like everything sales, wrote all the content. And as I was doing it, I thought, this is actually what I want to do. Wow. Then I listened to this speech called by Steve Jobs. And the only part of it I liked was connect the dots backwards. Okay. Oh, I heard that. Yep. So now that makes a lot of sense. So if you sat down and you looked at your life backwards and looked at what the key pieces to your life are, you will know your purpose if you don't know it. Okay. So I looked back and I started writing for the university's newspaper when I was in high school. Then all of my sales jobs had to do with publications. Okay. I've edited, I've published, I write all of this. And then I looked at the music industry and even my not-for-profit job was about working with youth on the street to get them to tell their stories more. So everything I did was about storytelling. 
Now, if I wanted my own magazine, what would it be about? And I sat and looked at the community and I went, my God, there's a huge disconnect between business, education, community, and innovation. Yes. So we put it all into one giant publication and away we went. And I really like two months before we launched the magazine, I approached eight people and said, will you write a story for me on your silo? So business, education, whatever. They all said yes, but they kind of laughed, you know, like, oh, you're not really going to do this. Oh, I launched it two months later. <clears throat> you know, so a month later, I was like, I need your content. It's like, where is it? And then we launched and then we launched events because we have to bring people together on an ongoing basis. Let's connect everybody that's not in your silo and not in your industry, not in your generation, so that we're learning on an ongoing basis and being inspired. And we're engaging in these things, which will teach all of us to be better. So it was really being handed somebody else's thing that made me go, huh, I should have been doing this a long time ago, but I never connected the dots backwards because we're always told to look forward. For all, oh, so I'm so glad thing. you said that. Yeah, I'm so glad you said that because so many people and therapists and psychologists and, and the say, yeah. you know, don't look pa- back. And, and I do agree with certain things because, you know, mm-hmm. looking back will definitely cause some depression, oh, looking forward sure. causes anxiety. But my motto yeah. is you have to look back to see how far you've come. That's my number one thing, because look at where you were 10 years ago, five years ago, two years ago, two months ago. And as long as you're moving forward, I don't even care if it's like a millimeter, as long as you're moving mm -hmm. forward. Right. And it has to be progress every day. That's the only thing that matters. hundred percent. And the backwards part Uh, And I'll just share a quick story with you as well, I think is so important, like you said, to because I listened to that speech as well. Mm -hmm. It's funny because I started writing a book, which I almost done, but it wasn't until I started writing my book, did I realize that I always knew what my purpose was. Like I always knew and (laughs) even into the, yeah. And even in the private investigation security, uh, 11 years in, I think I was nominated for some award and I was kind of like, that's kind of weird. I'm like, why would they, like, I'm not even an ex-police officer. Yes. I, you know, whatever. And they're like, you're the first Canadian woman to own a private Mm -hmm. investigation security company. I'm like, really? (laughs) It was just like, you know, and it is really about doing what you're passionate about. You don't do what you're passionate about, which mine was always serving and helping others. Yes, it was a conduit of private investigation, but I never looked, oh, I'm a woman in a male predominant industry, but I had huge backlash, huge backlash, which is a story for another time, some other uh, podcast, but I mean, we could do a whole podcast on that. Like just on the backlash of being in a man's industry. Being in, in a man's world, I was not welcome. And I had no mentorship, which was really hard, except for one man. To this day, I always give him kudos. His name was Tom. I won't say his last name. But he was the only person that would even give me the time of day and was a mm-hmm. huge mentor, sat down, and lovely, lovely person. And, you know, I had a lot of, you know, haters. I had people, you know, anyways, it really doesn't matter. Yeah. but. My point to my story is I did it because I loved what I was doing. I believed in the former police officers that they left law enforcement, but they still loved the investigative part of things. So that to me was my passion. So I didn't do it for recognition. I didn't do it for anything other than that's what I'm passionate about. And like you said, if I look backwards, you see that it was always that for me. And I love it. And there was always science there, right? Like, and my thing is, is you don't need to look back at all of the bad stuff. Maybe look back at what was good and what's still in your life. You know, if I look back, I could connect people that are involved with the magazine now that I knew when I was in college, right? Wow. Because these people were instrumental in this journey, but they stayed. And now they're doing writing for me, or now they're pushing me to be better. There is key points when you look backwards. So that it's pointing you, it's just, we weren't ready yet, or we didn't listen yet. And we didn't know that it's remarkable when you look back, because you're like, wow, like I mean, love hindsight. Right? It's one of my favorite things, because, you know, usually something has to happen, whether it's a shift, whether it's yep. something that's good, bad or indifferent. 
But when you hindsight and you look back and I do look back because I, I have beautiful memories of my kids, of my father, mm -hmm. of past life. I, I don't mean, you know, I think when people say don't look back, they're always saying, you know, don't necessarily live in your trauma or your childhood trauma or, or the negative. Mm -hmm. But I think looking back is OK, because it yeah. does connect the dots, really, if you look right. back. And it helps you move forward. Right. And you, you don't need to live in that moment. You just need to look back to see what key pieces you need to carry forward, you know, instead of letting everything go. There's a lot of things we need to let go of. And I mean, who you were yesterday doesn't make who you are today. It was just part of your journey for you to get to your story. That's absolutely, it. Absolutely. You know, and I always use the, the one quote. It's, it's until thought is linked with purpose. There's no intelligent accomplishment. Okay, so I've carried this quote since so it's my high school yearbook. So I would date myself. but long time ago, I found this quote, a couple of years, but what does it really mean? Right? Like, what, what does that even and then it finally, when I look, connect the dots backwards, and then I was like, there's your purpose. And I'm the one who wants to like, I just want to run around to everybody and talk to everybody and meet everyone and connect everyone. And you don't fit in a box. And you're like, me. Yep. you don't fit in people's little squares of what they think you should be. Nope. So you there's get a lot of backlash, right? Yeah. And it's you're like on the outside running around in a circle. Right. Or we're on it. the perimeter, but I got yeah. it to you. I bet you everybody that you meet and I know everybody that I meet is mm -hmm. just like, we need more people like you because I want to be like you, but I'm afraid to step over the line. And these are the yeah. reasons why, but just yeah. keep, keep going outside of the box. Cause I'm going to meet you there soon. And mm -hmm. that's really, I think what yours and my, our, our purpose really aligns because we are sort of setting the stage for people to step outside of their comfort zone. Like you're connecting people yeah. that would have never been connected. You're telling stories that nobody would ever hear or want to maybe take the time to listen to. <laughs> oh, I got to tell you this one story. So tell me, tell me. Teaching, teaching drums. Um, I decided I want to run like a woman's hand drumming workshop. And this is, this is years ago. So I just put it out there. We're going to have this. And I think there's maybe 15 ladies. We're doing this workshop and it's running for five weeks. So we meet every Sunday at a community center and play some hand drums and yell and scream. And this one lady comes and super corporate, corporate lady, mother, like, and dressed to the nines, woman keeps her head down really quiet. Won't, we do this circle thing where like yell at whatever you want while you're like beating the crap out of this drum and she wouldn't say anything gets to her and she just keeps her head down well we get to the last class and we're drumming away and so she's like finally like going crazy and gets to her to yell something out and she goes chicken and cheese and I was like I I'm the instructor I'm not to laugh and I just stopped playing because I was dying because I thought there it is you just stepped out of your box oh like I you love that story. everything you know and you're like this, this is it. This is why I'm doing this because you <laughs> just stepped outside of your box for two seconds and she just starts laughing and laughing. And I thought, this is it. Like all you need to do is step outside for two seconds and you can go back inside if you want, if you don't like it, but step outside so you can meet someone new, so you can learn something different. So you can connect somebody to somebody else. Just step outside. Absolutely. I love that, that I'm not even going to ask why she yelled that. Oh, However, so she looked up after her in her little quiet voice. She's laughing so hard. She goes, I don't get out much. And I'm like, then you're even dying more because you're like, oh my God. you're like, that's why you yelled that. Yeah. I love that. But that yeah. is what I feel life is about, mm -hmm. which is stepping outside of your comfort zone, stepping yes. outside of the box that you know, maybe your parents or society has dictated to us, like, why do we need to, you know, conform to something we don't want, or we're not comfortable, <laughs> doing, or we're not happy doing, I don't understand. And I never did. So I can't really, I'm not going to say can't understand, but I can't really adopt that kind of train of thought yeah is I can, if, when you get put in a relationship that that you become that and you're 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 now inside this box and you're trying to fit into somebody else's box it, it it's gonna make you explode especially when you're the one that's running through the box you know like ah, yeah, yeah. And people need to stop doing what they think people want of them you know, this is now about, we need to teach the next generations coming up to live their life to the fullest, to chase after their passions and purposes, to educate, to be inspired, to engage. And we all have to do this together. 
but we don't all fit in a box that and is- that's okay. And I, I mean, it takes people years to learn that it's okay not to fit in a box because, you know, growing up, you look at schools, there's the athletics, there's, you know, the band, the drama, the academics. Well, you could fit into maybe all of those, but not just stay in one. And then you think something's wrong because you're going to all of these different groups. No, you're allowed. You don't have to belong to one community. You can belong to all of them. Oh, that is a powerful message for all the young ladies listening because, and ladies of all ages, but you know, you're so right because even back in the day, we were really actually sort of segregated by if you liked rock, if you liked funk, if you liked jazz, oh, yeah. if you liked whatever, there were the rockers, the funkers, the whatever. Yeah. And you were really sort of put into that box. And it was funny because my my rocker friends were like, well, why are you talking to her? She likes funk. I'm like, because I like funk. I like everything. I'm like kind of a mixed bag of everything. Yes. So I was the one that was in every group because I yeah, liked it all, right? Mm-hmm. And people yeah. were very, mm, is she loyal to us? I'm like, hell yeah, I'm your girl. But I'm still going to go over here if they're playing a, you know, a good song or if they're doing whatever. And I think yeah. that's what makes years yourself and other women like us those change makers because mm-hmm. we're telling society it's okay just to be yourself and if yourself right. is today awesome if you feel like this tomorrow rock star and i think it's okay we need to give ourselves permission which what you and i discussed before is a <laughs> it's a learnt very long lesson for women because we really are the caregivers we're taught to care for other people and look after everybody else yes except we come last which is it's not good because then we end up getting into burnout and into health and mental well you can't help anybody that you can't help other people 150 percent i love that so krista do tell in closing what was your biggest one, because I know as an entrepreneur and as a mom, there's many, many stories, especially with a woman like yourself. What was would you say was one of your biggest struggles being a woman in the business and industry that you're in? Being a woman and a mom, period. <laughs> and I and I don't mean to to make that a thing, but it is like you have to juggle all of this stuff and when you are a parent and you decide to start a business or you're in the music industry, it's very challenging and you get put down a lot, you know, and people want to stop you or you have to go get a real job or you have to make more money. I I can't remember how many times I was told to go get a real job, you know, go get a a, what. And I'm like, what is a real job? Do I have a fake job? Pays me fake money. (laughs) And people, that's what people think. And when you start working on your own, people are like, well, let me get a job. Well, this is my job, you know? I created it and I don't want to fit into the box of nine to five. I don't know how anybody can do that. And I'm bravo to all people that can, but if I want to work at two in the morning, I can. Exactly. You know, if I want to work nine to five, I can. If I don't want to work nine to five, I don't have to. I can decide what I want to do for myself. And that in itself is a challenge, learning to be okay with the decisions you make. You know, yes. I made this choice. I was going to start this magazine and I wasn't stopping. And I'll tell you the first year, <laughs> I remember I'm five months in and the guy goes, so when's your call date? And I said, what's that? And he goes, well, if it doesn't work, I'm like, why would I make one of those? Why is that even a thought? And don't get me wrong. Every year you go through that. Do I keep this going? Am I doing it right? What do I need to adjust? You have to learn to be okay with the decision made and be happy with what you're doing. I can't picture myself doing anything else except running around connecting people. This is what I do. This is the only thing I want to do. And I have to let everything else go that people say. So it's learning self-care really, really hard. Not listening to other people also really, really hard. That's right. And and it's also learning like when someone starts like putting you down or like questioning your stuff, I didn't ask them for their opinion or advice. So I don't need to listen. And that's the other thing. Let's just shut it off. They can say whatever they want. It's their opinion, but it doesn't need to impact me at all. I love that. How do you respond? Share with some with our listeners, because I know even when I had my first child, you know, people, everybody would give opinions on how to do this. You know, is he eating that? I'll never forget yeah. it. going through law laws and God bless the cashier was like, do you really think you need this dear? Cause you just had a child. And I was like, 
what? That did not just oh. go your mouth, did and it? Then you just, then you're like, what did you just say? Yeah, like, exactly. I'm just like, what? And I, I just, I didn't even at the time, again, I was young. I was just like, uh, it's not for me. It, damn straight. Those salt and vinegar chips were for me. Right. But I yeah. just think, and now when people say things that are really offside, I just look at them and I'll come up with something. Hopefully it's usually humorous, kind of like, did you have your cornflakes this morning? And they'll be like, what? But if you put it back with a question, they kind of yeah. think like, okay, did I just say something that was totally out there? Because I'm telling them something that's totally out there. I mean, of course you could kind of say, you know, none of your beat business, but how do you respond? What are, are your it, responses? It, de it depends on the situation, right? So, I mean, if some people come and want to give me advice, I really just stare at them. Like I didn't ask for your advice. <laughs> You know, like, or are you, you my pink like, hair? Yeah, exactly. Like, did, I, did I ask you for your advice? No. So why are you giving it to me? I love when that. I'm ready for your advice, I will ask for your advice. But and that's a really hard thing to learn to do as well. Because I mean, people just like to give advice all of the time. They and sure do. You know, and no. So now I just say no thanks. Because I have mentors oh, thank and you. I have specific people in my life. Those are the people I go to for advice. When I would like your advice, I will come to you and ask you. But in the meantime, you have no say into my business or how I raise my children. Uh-huh. And so one of my favorite things is no, thank you. Because you're so yeah, no, thank people, you. people don't know what to say. They're like, well, what do you mean? No, thank you. And I'm just like, yeah, no, thank you. I'm no, like, okay, you. talk to you soon. And they're like, you, you can see. And I kind of look back and they're like, I don't understand. You know? And it's just like, but I love the fact that you'll kind of call people out. And I think that comes with uh, maturity and with age that you're able to sort of call people out in a way that's not disrespectful. Oh, and no. Of course, much they're polite, dis right? But they're disrespecting yeah. you by actually coming out and saying something where they were not asked. I thought another really yeah. good one for you was, that's really interesting. Maybe you'll want to send me like something in writing on that and uh, I'll take a look at it. That's what I would say. Cause I'm like, yeah. why do people say that? I don't even understand. It's, Unsolicited people, advice. But we're taught to give advice. We're not taught to listen or ask questions. Like right from the get go, we're taught to just give our opinion. You know, when someone says, and I love doing it this way. We're taught to say, how are you today? Our answer is good. Now, the minute someone goes, oh, not so good, or says something else, people either back off really quick, or they want to give advice, right? Well, why aren't you good? And then you tell them, and automatically, they're, they're replying with a story. Well, when I went through the same thing, no, no. Why don't you just sit back and listen? And listen? I love you know, that. Like, and if you have questions about someone's business, or the way they're raising their kids, or the way they're doing something, ask. Don't tell. Don't do anything. Ask first. And then you can ask permission to give advice, you know, and it's no different than with mental health stuff. If someone's going through something, don't give advice, ask what they need. How can I help you with this? What do you need from me? You know, yeah. like or we how can I make asking it, questions or how can I make it better for you in the moment That's right. or for the day? Is there something, yeah, what do you need from me? What can I do for you? hundred yeah. percent. And I feel that too, you know, with mental health, and I love the fact that you are a massive advocate. And mm -hmm. like I said to you uh, in our first conversation that, you know, when I first started the magazine, I had, you know, my PR folks and some of, you know, our advisors say, well, you know, you've got female empowerment, you've got these leaders, they're fearless stories, stay at home moms, women that choose not to have children and mental health. Like, what is it that you're doing here, Adrian? And I'm like, well, mental health affects everyone. It like, it, it touches everybody's life. You don't, I mean, first of all, I think we all have something we struggle with. Now everybody's putting a label on it, fair enough. So everybody struggles with something. Then you've also probably got friends, family, coworkers, a stranger on the yep. street that is suffering. And it just, it takes a village. It really takes Thank a village. You. Yeah, make things better and to break the bias and to have the hard, tough conversations. You don't know whose life you're going to change. Right. And it, I think it's that really simple. Just be nice. 
like be a good human. Uh, that, that's like the simplest rule. Yep. One of my oh, t-shirts. Right. And, and, and just because you're having a crappy day doesn't mean you need to take it out on other people. No. Yep. And one of but, my but favorite sayings is be a kind human. And yes. you get to have a bad day. You get to snap. Nobody is perfect. We're all perfectly <laughs> imperfect, but be kind. And, you know, sometimes I'm like raging pissed for whatever the reason is. And I'll go home and I'll be like, listen, haven't had a good day. I'm going to go get on my bike. I'm going to go for a walk. I'm going to do whatever. I'll be back in 30 minutes. And then they're like, but I just need, and I'm like, Hey, you're going to get the grumpy me. So if you want that, that's fine. I need yeah. like just to decompress. And again, I think it's communication too, I think is key. Thank you. Yeah. But, uh, you know, I, I feel like we all struggle uh, with either ourselves or loved ones that or coworkers that have some kind of mental health struggle. And I think just having the knowledge and being able just to even if it's just you having empathy, you don't have to run in and fix it. You don't have to be their therapist, friend or confidant, but just having the empathy and the understanding. And I believe you had said this before, but I'm stealing your saying is that mm -hmm. if somebody calls in and says, I'm unwell with the flu. I can't yes. come in today versus I can't come in today because I can't even get out of bed and go take a shower. I'm having, I'm going to take a mental health day. It is a yes. problem. It is still a problem. It is still a problem. And we, we treat mental health funny because we can't see it and because we don't understand it. And no matter what you're going through, if you have depression and I have depression, they're still totally different. Okay. Very so I can't, I still can't understand what you're going through. Same with anxiety. It's, it's, it's something different for everyone. The cause is different. How you feel is different. There's specific symptoms and stuff that you feel, but mental health is totally different, right? Different triggers, different things. And it comes down to, you could change someone's whole day by being in line and paying for their coffee or by turning around and saying, I like your shoes or by smiling at someone or by saying, hello, you know, me and one of my business associates go to this big gala every year. And I swear she just comes so she can tell people how great they look in their dresses. And I just love this because she'll stop everyone. She's like, I love your dress. I love your shoes. I love this. And every single person that she says something to has like this huge smile when they leave, Aww. you know? I that's love amazing. That. I, I want to see more of that. And it's really simple. You know, hold like the door for someone. People are going to they, see they more of you. it. Yeah. yeah. And you're going to see more of it because yeah. what you're doing, you've got your superhero cape, you've got your drumsticks in hand and you're going for it. And the thing is, you are spreading not only the knowledge, but you're giving people a safe uh, platform or platforms yeah to be able to share their story that most people maybe wouldn't have heard because they'd never bothered to ask. Everybody is so busy in their own lives, the hustle, the bustle, right. the hurry. They don't take a moment just to listen to somebody else's story. And some of the greatest leaders in the world, I know this is what I learned many years ago, even though I have a gift of the gab. And even sometimes when people are talking, I have to still pull back just because I'm so excited like to talk about whatever. You have to sit back and you have to listen. And the greatest leaders in the world are the last to speak because they can yes. absorb what everybody else is saying and come back with or adjust what they were going to say so people feel like they've been heard and that they're listened to. I love, That's right. I'm, love, love your mission. There's a, I'm going to find another quote. One of my mentors shares this quote all of the time. And I'm like, and, and it's brilliant because it's about listening and we forget to listen, right? We, we just love to talk. We love to talk about ourselves. We love to talk about other people. It's quite remarkable, but it's it says the greatest man is great because of not the questions that he answers, but the questions that he asks. And we Ooh. need to start asking more questions, right? And that comes back to the listening. You're not going to know what questions to ask unless you listen to the person talk. So listen, don't give advice, ask questions instead. I love, you know, that. because that leads to the advice and that leads to exploring that leads to learning and it leads to both of you collaborating instead of one person giving and the other person just taking, you can both come up with a solution, but ask the questions. Like, let's talk about the questions. Let's talk about what you're going through. Let's talk about the next story. And I mean, 
when we tell stories, it could be personal, it could be work, it could be anything, but it's how can we take the story and get the community to connect? You know, how can we get people to collaborate on an ongoing basis? Because if we don't have that connection, we're not going to collaborate. So let's get the connection, which you're going to get through storytelling and which that, is listening. <laughs> that is huge. And, you know, a lot of people, they, they aren't quite as communicative, let's say, as you and I are. And I know a lot of people will come to me and say, oh, you're so strong. And, you know, I am unbreakable. Have you always been unbreakable? I'm like, hell no. The reason, <laughs> you have to be broken I first. <laughs> I'm unbreakable is because you got to be broken, not once, but several times to become <laughs> And to build yourself up to be unbreakable, right? And That's so true, when yeah. you're unbreakable, you still break, right? That, mm -hmm. you know, there's that wonderful saying is, you know, we're all broken and that's how the light gets in, right? Mm -hmm. And so what you were saying too is it is just about being curious. Ask the questions. Don't assume I've yes. never been through hard times. I've been through hell and back. I think I could probably write 20 books of the stuff that I've gone through. Yeah. So no, my life is, you know, I, it's for some people, they might think it's really easy for me to talk about it. It's mm -hmm. not, it's because I've lived it. Right. And the same with you, you tell these stories because you get it. You understand yeah. it. you've experienced tough times you've experienced struggles right hence why I always say with my tattoo the struggle is part of the story and it's your story and thank you so much for allowing me and the listeners just a small snapshot of who Krista is and your story because you are absolutely amazing thank you so much you. for joining us no thank you so much for having me great and conversation I Thanks, hon. And I look forward to the amazing things we're going to do together. So if people want to get a hold of you, can you just share? I'm going to include a link in your bio, but what's the mm. easiest way for folks to find you? Uh, through communitynowmagazine.com and just hit contact or to look me up on LinkedIn, Krista Malden. And there I am. I'm pretty visible. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. With that superhero cape and the pink yeah. hair and nails. You are very easy to find. Love you. Yeah, Thank you can't so miss me in a crowd. <laughs> Love you too. Thank, Thank you. you.